Advanced manufacturing is moving very quickly, and our adversaries around the world are advancing the sophistication and the technology in their manufacturing and their supply chains. We as a country need to keep up with that. If you don't invest in innovation, you lag. We need to keep investing across the supply chain, across the spectrum, if we're going to remain a leader in manufacturing. Because if we can't produce things, we have a problem. Private entities don't normally come together to go solve something bigger that is a critical area for our national security and our economic prosperity. You need an institute to be that catalyst that brings it all together. The Manufacturing USA Network consists of 17 institutes today and two more will be added over the next year. And it's a network that collaborates on various ways to advance our manufacturing. Our core purpose is to do good across the nation in the manufacturing sector, in technology and in talent. And that's something you can be proud of. When you bring people together, they share knowledge, they share understanding, they share ideas, they share successes, they share failures. That sharing of that ecosystem is so critical. And the whole idea is work on things that we were willing to work on together so that it helps everybody do better more quickly. What you see in this background behind me is the robotics manufacturing hub. We're able to leverage the institute and help these small and medium manufacturers that make up 80% or 90% of U.S. manufacturing to modernize the operations, implement robotics and automation in ways they just couldn't have before. We just did a really interesting series of workshops and ultimately produced a roadmap and investment strategy for where does additive manufacturing support the castings and forgings industry. But it was really about is it possible to augment these conventional industries with a new technology? There's never been a better time to be in manufacturing. Robotics, automation, cybersecurity, materials, decarbonization. There's so many exciting technologies that we're focused on. No matter how much technology we develop, we don't solve the workforce problem. We are in serious trouble. We've trained over 250,000 people. I'm looking forward to the next million that we're going to work with to get them the skills so that they're ready for today, but more importantly, ready for tomorrow. You need the talent to make things. You also need the technology to make things. And if you get the two things aligned at the same point in time, so that you've got the right technology and the right people to use that technology, you've got something that's unbeatable. With the input that we received from our members, we were able to identify these roles that are going to be needed. And then we bring in our academic partners to say, how do we collaborate in creating the career pathways that are going to help us build those jobs of the future? This region was impacted very severely because of the downturn in the economy. But places like the Digital Foundry provide people with a visibility that says that manufacturing is still alive and that using the right technology for manufacturing can bring those jobs back. Ten years ago, nobody knew about a member-based ecosystem. Nobody understood the project ideas. But the thing I really like is that we as institutes have evolved along with Industry 4.0 and advanced manufacturing adoption. We stabilized ourselves. We then put ourselves in a growth mode. We're now wishing to replicate the lessons learned from that in satellites across the nation. And I hope in the next 10 years, we'll keep evolving as the needs change. And this will look very different 10 years from now, but I think the impact will be orders of magnitude larger. We're stood up, we're a mature entity. Let's just keep doing the work and do it bigger and better.